Peterson. I have been licensed since December of 2014. I started Keller Williams 2015. I was um, I was also Rookie of the Year that year. I moved to Legacy Real Estate in 2016 and then returned back to KW in 2018 because I saw no value, something we're going to be speaking about today, where I went. Alan Wang reached out to me and um, told me about the new venture at KW, Santa Clara Valley, and I also became an investor when I joined, and I have served on the ALC since that time. I founded the Peterson Realty team when I came on board, thanks to Kenny Han for coming up with the name. There are four people on the team. There's Brian Lee, there's Kenny Han, there's Donna Tam, who is also our director of operations. We're all licensed realtors. And today our focus is actually going to be on you guys and the value that you need to bring to your customers and your community and your business. We call this your value proposition. And in this session, you'll have the opportunity to begin to define your value proposition. Does anybody, by the way, have a value proposition um, that they want to share? Or do you have a tagline? No? That's okay. I'm going to share mine a little bit later with you guys. Okay, so everybody wants to know what the secret is to being a successful real estate agent. There's no secret. There's absolutely no secret. This is it right here. Um, there are two things that you have to do at all times. You have to grow your business and you have to run your business. Just as it states here, I'm going to try and slow down. Sometimes they speak too fast. Um, you have to lead generate for your buyers and sellers. I'm sure anybody's around Mark Burstein. This is what he says. He doesn't say good morning. He says lead generate. Um, make seller listing presentations and get listings. And you've got to make buyer presentations and get um, clients. I crossed out the preview because we don't preview real estate anymore. We actually tour real estate with clients. On the other side of things, we have to run the business. So that means market seller listings. I have to minimize your faces because I'm not able to see my screen. I apologize. Oh, man. Let me go this. Touch of the finger and everything goes wrong. Give me a moment here. My apologies, it just went back. There we go. Awesome. Nope, not awesome. There we go. That face button is finally working again. Sorry about that, guys. So on the other side, you have to market seller listings. You have to show buyer houses. You have to negotiate contracts. And you have to do transaction management. If you're brand new on this call, we really recommend that you use some kind of a transaction no, sorry. We ask that you do the first few transactions yourself so that you can become familiar with what is needed in the background. Then most of us use a transaction coordinator. For $400 and $450 or $500, it is the best money that you're going to spend in this business. Then you do vendor management. Right now we have a listing and Kenny is literally running from that listing right now to back to the office to hop on the call, he was helping me meet uh, some um, inspectors out there. So that's part of what you have to do as well. There's the setting of goals and tracking them. I'm going to actually take the time at the end to show you how our team tracks our goals and how we also do our vendor management. I'm going to actually give you some real live, this is how we do it. And then, of course, stay compliant, guys. Um, nobody wants to lose their license. So do the right thing. Follow the laws. Follow the rules. And um, also make sure that you are managing your money. There's a business planning clinic that I believe is coming up. Please be aware of that and, um, 
and to learn how to manage your money is, is important. So here's the roadmap for today. First, we're going to define what a value proposition is. Next, we're going to explore the essential aspects. These are the three essential aspects of the service that you need to provide. Then we're going to dig into your unique qualities and values and point out what direction you need to take to craft your own powerful proposition. So let's discuss the three aspects of service. This will help you build your value proposition. So you're going to craft a simple and precise description of the benefits for your clients. I'm going to share, share mine with you at the end or in the middle somewhere. And then you've got to clearly convey what you do to earn the fee that you charge. And then you want to make your value proposition a covenant between you and your, your clients. So when Gary Keller was researching for the millionaire real estate agent, he noted that every top producing agent he spoke to had a deep and inherent sense of service. They really want to serve people. You cannot grow a real estate business if you don't prioritize your clients. If they're not number one, this is the wrong business for you, really, it, it, it is. You've got to prioritize them above all else. A seller experience, the best experience, is how you earn your commission and get referrals. If you want to do one piece of business, <laughs> and then don't get anything from that. That's such a waste of time. I think there are many of us on this call that are referral agents, um, primarily. Alan Wang does most of his business as a referral agent. I will say that I have never paid for a lead in the six years I've been in business. I am strictly a referral agent. All of my business is referral. I have never, um, well, what I mean by referral, no, I, is that a lot of my leads come from other people. So I still have to pick up the phone. I still have to call them, but I'm referred in some way or another. So KW identifies three aspects of service, like I mentioned, and the, here they are here. Um, and you've got to really know your underlying purpose of the real estate profession You've got to have and communicate a clear sense of how you deliver on that purpose, and you've got to understand fiduciary. This is where you put your client's needs above every single thing else. So what's the underlying purpose of real estate? Let's kind of break it down. It's different for buyers than it is for sellers, and we all know that, right? For buyers, it's about finding them the right home, the best price, the right time with the least amount of problems. For sellers, it's about netting them the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of problems. So notice here that the least amount of problems is the thing that both of them have in common, right? As a realtor, what are some of the problems that you guys ever anticipate for your clients and what have you done to avoid them? Does anybody have any example of some problems that you anticipate and that you avoid because you've already anticipated them? Education of the client. I'm sorry, say it again, I'm talking about the client. Yes, educating them about the process. Very good, very good. So I actually wrote that down too. I wrote that when it comes to my buyers in particular, I anticipate that they're going to talk to me about Zillow and Z estimates and Redfin estimates. And so the, the exactly what I put down too is that I educate them. I pull up the MLS. With Zoom, it's so easy, you guys, because you can show them. You don't have to sit next to somebody and hope that they're seeing it. They can see the screen and you can educate them about the MLS, pull it up, show them how you really get comps, show them that the pendings are the true comps. So the other thing I also point out, I'm just gonna throw a couple tidbits in here. When buyers talk to me about the estimates, 
I point out to them that um, Raskop, who was the um, the president of Zillow, he sold his house for one million fifty thousand dollars, and his Z estimate said it was a million seventy five. I mean, that takes care of that right there. Give people facts. We deal with a lot of engineers, and engineers want facts. Okay. So let's take a look at this as well. Value proposition, we're gonna talk about this over and over. It's an easy way for your clients to understand what you will do for them and why you should, they should choose you over any other agent. It states what you're going to do to earn your commission and help to explain the complexity of what you do. Don't downplay this because if you can state your value proposition, which is almost like an elevator pitch, um, it's something that you can say in a few minutes, less, definitely less than five minutes, but I would say under three minutes. You can tell people what it is you're going to do for them and why they should choose you over any other agent. It states what you're going to do to earn your commission and helps to explain the complexity, like I said, of what you do. It also holds you accountable to a higher standard. It sets the expectation for our clients and reminds us what we're promised to do. This is integrity, right? We do what we say we're going to do. We usually have a loose understanding of how we provide our clients with value, and it's really easy to forget that they might understand very little of that value. So your value proposition is what you bring to the experience. Your value statement phrases your skills, expertise, and insights in language that makes them relevant to your client. For example, how many of you here, and I'm gonna ask Mark to help me out here, um, look at the screen and see how many people are raising hands um, because I am not able to see my entire screen with everybody's gorgeous faces this morning. Um, I'm gonna try and make this side by side, but nope, not able to do it, sorry guys. I'm gonna to have to depend upon Mark on this one. Mark or Brian or um, Kenny, if you can count away, I'd appreciate it. But how many of you speak another language? Can I just, let me hear, oh, look, hands. I see some hands going up. Well, so how many people are we looking at there, Brian uh, or? There's About five. 10. There's oh, there's a two. Yeah, there's Myrna. There's Ali. Okay. Fantastic. Oops, sorry. Great. So um, I love this. B Brian, yeah, that's right. You speak another language as well. Um, so do I. No, not really. Um, I, I speak the language of how to speak to husbands. Um, I would consider that a special language all onto itself. So um, let me ask you a question. How could, I mean, I want you to think about how you could use that. Because a lot of people will say, I'm bilingual. Well, that doesn't tell you the value. Lupita, of course. Uh, that doesn't tell you. And Hilda, I guess, is on here and Jacqueline. They all speak a different language. True. So if you speak... If fluent in English and Mandarin, you may be tempted to simply say, I'm bilingual. That's true, but it doesn't convey your value to your clients. Not really. Instead, you can say, I have access to and can communicate with a large pool of potential buyers for your home who are often overlooked by other agents because I speak Mandarin and English, Spanish and English, Vietnamese and English, whatever it is, right? You want to add that in there. You want to tell them that you can have access to all of these other people that other people don't have access to. So that's the way you're going to um, play that a little bit. So how does changing the phrasing, how do you see that changing the phrasing adds to your value proposition? It expands it. And it paints the picture to the client. Exactly. They, they're not connected to you through a particular language, right? Especially if you can help them that way. So let's go on and talk about this, the third and final aspect of service, which is fiduciary. 
a big word. It means oh. take care. I'm sorry, did I just hear Yvette. a voice? Yes, Yvette, can I please ask a question about the previous sure. one? So you mentioned sure. engineers, right? So in the Valley here, most of them are analytical. So, and you are saying that we have to really communicate value proposition. I find myself in the opposite position of having to convert my value proposition into quantitative terms in numbers. So how does that work? So I, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you. It's all in the way you convey it to the client, right? So yes, you do want to give them numbers, but you give them numbers once you have them engaged. People do business with people that they like or they trust. They really do. And the, you know, majority of my people that I deal with are engineers. 80%, maybe higher, are engineers. So I always present who I am first, and then you can get into the numbers. They're going to ask you questions maybe about how much business you've done. I've got to tell you, though, I think I've been asked that once in six years. What you focus on expands. So do not focus on that. And and I can sit with you one-on-one -on -one and break that down for you and show you how I do that. But um, once you get them into the buying process, you can show them. Actually, you can put that in your, in your value proposition, how you use numbers to explain or how you use data to explain to your clients how they should um, price a home or what number they need to come on to buy a home. You're going to do that through some kind of an analysis, right? Yes. But when you're telling them about who you are, you're not going to give them numbers on yourself. Numbers are your age, your shape, your whatever. They want to know who you are. So that's what I would okay. focus on. Let me keep going, and I think you're going to get to it where you see that. Is that okay? okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. I know, I know it's, a, it's a tough one, but, but you're going to get around it. A lot of it is practice. A lot of it is mindset. This is why when we go into a bold class, they don't focus on numbers. They focus on mindset. Because many of us have been trained a certain way, think a certain way, believe a certain way. And until we turn that around onto ourselves and we believe what Keller Williams is telling us, what Gary Keller is telling us, what the history of all these successful agents are telling us, we're going to keep stumbling. Okay, so let me let me continue on this this one here. So we're going to go back to the high school English class and talk about fiduciary. It's uh, both an adjective and a not noun, and it refers to something dealing with trust, especially relationships. You have a fiduciary duty to your client to protect their best interests during what likely will be the largest and the most frightening transaction in their lives, especially if they're brand new at this, right? So that's fiduciary is about you putting your clients above every single thing else. The other side of fiduciary is a noun, right? You're your client's fiduciary. You're the person that's supposed to stand um, in the gap for them and make sure that nothing goes wrong for them. So a functionary is one who just completes tasks for the client, whereas a fiduciary completes tasks and goes beyond by placing their client's interests ahead of all else, even their own. Remember, even your own interests. That means don't think about your commission. Think about really helping your clients. So a functionary is not what you're about. You're a fiduciary. So being a fiduciary is a big deal. It's an honor. It's more important than ever in today's market to wear that like a badge of honor proudly. Helping our clients understand your fiduciary role is a big part of your value proposition. This is what I was just discussing with you. And you're going to see how you can do that. They know they have someone in their corner looking out for them. Every one of us, when you go into a car lot, when you go to buy a house, when you go to a travel agent, you want to make sure that you've got somebody that's looking out to get you the best price, you know, or they're looking out to get you the best terms. This is what it's about. In our 
in our book, I mean, I don't know if you, how many of you actually have been agents longer than a few years, but or even after a year, you forget some of the things that were in your real estate book. And one of the things that the real estate book says about fiduciary, these are the these are the six things that fall under fiduciary in the real estate book: honesty, confidentiality, full disclosure, care, loyalty and obedience to the laws. Can any of you give me an example um, of how you have executed your fiduciary duty? Actually, I'm going to actually throw this out. Is Mark on the call? Here. Mark, could you give us an example of how you have actually executed your fiduciary responsibility to a client? Well, one of the ways we all execute our fiduciary responsibility is by thoroughly completing an AVID with every property that you're working with. You know, by doing a good job on that AVID, it shows that you are looking out for your client's interest and exercising utmost <clears throat> care. Remember, guys, in the agency disclosure, it's, it states what is our fiduciary duty, and that's utmost care. Utmost care is not reasonable care. It's utmost. So that's Thanks, the way Mark. we do it. You know, I, 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 I had a smile on my face when Mark said our avid because I don't know how many of you like, like me, but I know that uh, my PC says, and I've heard this from almost every transaction coordinator, that they have to chase down the agents, including me, to get avid done. I mean, it's just something we hate to do, but it's, it's part of what we need to do to show utmost care for our clients. I recently had a transaction that, Man, it would have gone so smoothly because my agent loved the place. Everything was great. Then we took a look at the HOA docs. And the assessments were plentiful that was coming up. But they only had 14 units and they didn't have enough reserves. So unfortunately, though she loved the property, I had to go back and tell her about what I found and say, you know what, this HOA is about to go broke. The parents thanked me. She thanked me. Now the parents are looking for um, property using me. So do your fiduciary responsibility, and I guarantee you, you will get more business out of it. So Brian actually looked these up for me, and these are value, value proposition examples. These are succinct ones, but it tells who you are. Yours is not going to be this succinct. Uber, the smartest way to get around. Apple iPhone, the experience is in the product. Nike, bring inspiration, innovation, sorry, to every athlete in the world. Slack, where work happens. Evernote, remember everything. Rolex, a symbol of excellence and timeless style. And Redfin, we built Redfin to get you a better deal. We're going to talk a little bit more about... Um, Redfin, but if I could wrap something up for the Peterson Realty team, we're your go-to agents. It's that simple for a tagline. But we're going to dig a little bit deeper and uh, get into how you write your value proposition. So let's look at some data around what clients want. We're going to take a look at the big picture at what the current real estate market is like, and we're going to discuss some ways that technology can boost your value proposition. Don't forget that you have a workbook, and although we're not going to dig into the workbook, normally we would if we're meeting in person. At this point, we would just break apart and maybe get in groups of two to four and start to do the activity, but we're not going to be able to do that here. So please make sure that you go into your student workbook and write about yourself, your strengths, your perspectives later tonight. Just take a few minutes, please, to do that. Um, classes are great, but you still have to do the work behind the classes to really gain something from this. So one of the things that I wrote down on this page, on my workbook page, was that, and this is what you should do, is to write down what are some of the things that make you really great at real estate. So I put down that I'm a strong negotiator. I'm a great communicator. I like to deliver bad news quickly. Um, I'm a problem solver. 
and I have strong market knowledge. So what are some of the things that you guys would say about yourselves? I just, just unmute yourself and just throw it out there. Just give me one word, two words about yourself, please. I'm a caring person. Caring, great. I follow up. Follow up is excellent. I'm I'm not I'm not going to start talking again until I get five more people. I like to educate and guide my clients. What was that? I like to educate and guide my clients. Educate and guide, love it. What else you've got? I like to analyze and understand markets. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, somebody else was there. Was that Lupita? I'm diligent. Okay. Somebody else spoke as well. Uh, I'm honest. Honest. I, I want an honest agent. Don't you? So guys, it's important that you know who you are. You know what you bring to the table. You know, a lot of times you say that you're new and you, uh, you're you not skilled as yet. You you have enough to bring to the table. Trust me on this one. In family reunion, I heard a solo agent. I was in a class about solo agents. And one of the solo agents mentioned that he was a problem solver. And that perked my ears up because that's what I've always considered myself. Some of these solves problems for my clients. And this agent said that he always asked his clients, what problem are you trying to solve? So you know what I did that very same day? I got on the phone with these um, clients that are kind of wavering back and forth on what money they should put down on a house and if they should move ahead with this process. And I said to them, so in purchasing a home, what problem are you trying to solve? Guys, I have used that statement on every single person I've met with ever since then because it helps focus your clients, right? Um, and it brings value immediately to them because they get that you're helping them focus. They need that. They need somebody to help them focus. So I said to my client, what problem are you trying to solve? And he says, well, I don't know. And I said, well, start at the front door. And he says, well, when I open up the front door, all my kids' shoes, all of our shoes are right there in the living room. And I said, so how do we solve that problem? He said, well, I'd love to have an entryway. Great. Write down entryway. Before we know it, we had a really great list. And he felt so good. I remember him the next day when I met with him, showing him a property. He said, that call really helped me last night. Because at the end of it, I didn't just say, okay, we're going to find all of these things. I said to them, Let's take a look at this list again. We went through and I said, what if we got half of this list? Would that be satisfactory to you? They said, almost. And they said, okay, we've got 11 items on here. And he says, well, and he went down the list, checked them all. Basically, he needed to have seven of the 11 items. I said, fine, we can do that. When I took him out, though, this last weekend, all of a sudden, one of those items went away. So it helps focus them and they begin to see what it is they can live without, what they can't live without. That's bringing value to your clients. Okay, so I just, I just want you to um, remember, everything is about value. So I mentioned to you, we're gonna talk about what buyers want, what sellers want, and a little bit about what the market is doing. So in order for you to know how to help your clients, you've gotta know what they want and you gotta know what they value. So this is what we're, do we're doing here. So unfortunately, sorry, my, uh, I've got some things blocking what I need to see on my screen. So let me just move this up. So what buyers want? They want help finding the right home to purchase. That's the largest amount that people want. They want help with price negotiation. They want help negotiating the terms of the sale. And then there's a chunk that's other, right? That's the 11%. Oh, great, my screen's not moving. There we go. 
technical difficulties. Here's some of the other things they want. They want to determine how much home they they can afford. So that means you're going to help them with finances. You're going to send them to the right finance person. Hopefully you have uh, some finance people that you like and that you want to work with. You want to help teach them about the neighborhood or areas that they're interested in. And if they've got an investment property, sometimes they want help finding out, finding buyers for the property. I'm not sure why my screen keeps freezing on me. Sorry about that, guys. I am really, there we go. I have to hit it like five times to get it moving along. So what buyer's value? The reputation of an agent. They want an agent that is honest and trustworthy. They want an agent that is friend or family, mostly. They want agents' knowledge of the neighborhood. Those are the things that they want. Here are some of the other things that they value. There we go. They want agents that are timely with responses. Somebody mentioned that they do follow up. That's important. If you're an agent that forgets to follow up, uh, your clients are not going to enjoy working with you. They they want that 100% accessibility. Yeah. You know what? You still have to shut off the phone sometimes or you have to. When I was a new agent, I took every call at any time. I mean, just all the time. I just did that. And I would say that it's still one of my greatest struggles um, is I don't I don't like to not be available for my clients. But if you set a good expectation of when they can contact you or how they can contact you, then you're going to get back some of your time and you need that. And that's some of the things you should do right up front. I'm sure Mark, if he's coaching you, is going to tell, tell you that you should guide them with the amount of time um, or accessibility that they have to you. So let's take a look at what sellers want. They want help selling their home to potential buyers. They want help pricing the home. They want to sell it in a specific time frame. Of course, you've got to find the buyers for the home and help with negotiation and dealing with the buyers. More likely dealing with the buyer's agents. And some of the other things that they want is help with negotiation on the deal, paperwork, of course, inspections, um, preparation. Right now we are, this morning, we picked up another listing. And so this morning, um, Kenny was, kind enough to jump in and go meet the inspectors out there this morning. And um, so he's helping Donna and I with some things that we need done. And it's just part of what they need. They want inspections. They want uh, staging. They want um, painting. And so you're going to help them with some of that type of stuff. And what they value is basically the same thing as they do from a buyer's agent. They want the reputation of the agent to be stellar. They want them to be honest and trustworthy. They want people that are friends or family members or referred by friends or family members. And then this is a this is one that I want to address. They want agents with experience. So um, although that is true, I will say that everybody has to start somewhere with getting a client, and we none of us have experience when we first start out. So one of the things I always say is that you could, um, you could maybe use the reputation of a team you're on, or the brokerage, or take along an experienced agent with you to help walk you through the process, so that they understand that you have partnership, you have a mentor, you have a coach <clears throat> along the way. But I know that this is a difficult thing when you haven't got your first listing as yet. Can, can you just give me a raise of hands, those who don't have their first listing as yet? And if, um, Brian, you could just count for me how many people? Um, five so far. Five. Okay. So, great. 
I say great because that means that you have opportunity. Opportunity is good. So I'm going to throw this out there and I'm going to say, who can, who can give me an example of where they got their first listing from? Anybody want to just first person to speak gets to give me the example. Calling my sphere. Okay, I'm going to give two of you a thought. I'm going to let, who who's the first person who? Who is Melissa? Who is the woman that just spoke up? It's Melissa. Hi. <laughs> Oh, hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much, Yvette, for doing this. This is one of my favorite classes. <laughs> Great. Would you do me a favor and tell us how you got your first listing? Uh, yes. Um, I went to Bold. Bold pushed me to make my 20 contacts a day, which happened to be my sphere. And out of that came my first listing. There we have it, guys. And you know what? She didn't. Ha she didn't have any experience before that but she got her first listing and anybody wants to know the specifics of it, reach out to Melissa. So somebody else spoke. Was that Rob or who was that? Yes, that was me probably. Hi, Rob. How'd you get your first listing? Lord time. Back when the phones used to ring and we have to sit in front of the phone and back 20 years ago, I had floor time and it worked. Somebody called in and I got a listing. That's fantastic. Mark, how did you get your first listing? My mama. My mama was my oh, first client. Oh, your mom? Client. My mom, <laughs> yes. Luckily, like shortly, well, within my first year of being licensed, my mom had a house to sell. So we, we sold it. That was my That first is time. awesome. <laughs> okay, so maybe some of you need to go home and start talking to your parents about moving. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say is, my, first, awesome. my first three listings were either my mom or my very close friends. They happened to want to move. You know, so my, my, um, my first listing, <laughs> my first listing came about because in my first month of real estate, I was door knocking a neighborhood with my husband. He's a commercial realtor. And he said, come on out with me. I'll show you how I door knock. So I went out with him and I took a picture of a building, a tr the blue skies and a tree in the background. And I posted it on Facebook and I said, I am, I'm out with my husband looking for, looking for property for my clients. That simple. Within about 10 minutes, I had a Facebook message from a friend of mine who said, hey, Yvette, when you're out looking, could you look for um, a two-bedroom, one-bath house um, in a better neighborhood than I'm in right now? And I knew which neighborhood she was in. And she said, I don't mind being in downtown. I love downtown, but I'm all the way up at 101 and Julian. And it's a little bit of a rougher neighborhood, and some of my girlfriends won't come here. So will you try and get me into the middle of downtown? Anywhere about 18th Street down to 1st Street. I said, okay, great. So I said, could I meet with you? And she said, sure. So I went out to her house, you guys, and I see this sign in her house. She's selling her house. She's got a sign from Better Homes and Gardens in her house. And I'm like, what the heck? So I go in to meet with her and I go, Margaret, what's with the sign in your front lawn? She says, well, I'm... You know, I can't get rid of this guy. I want to get rid of this guy uh, from Better Homes and Gardens, and he won't come and take the sign out. And I said, well, what do you mean he won't take the sign out? Well, I have an agreement with him, and he said that I have an agreement for three months, and he's not going to remove the sign. And then I pick up the phone, call my mentor, and my mentor said, just tell her that all she has to do is call the brokerage. The brokerage doesn't want a bad name or anything like that. And she doesn't want to do business with them. So just have them call and then she can choose whoever she wants after that. So we had a meeting about what she wanted to do. And it turned out that she wanted to buy before she sold. And the agent was not helping her on the buy side. So she said, you're not helping me. You're not doing what I want to do. I want you to remove the sign. I don't want to do business with you. I got a call from her 
three days later, and she said, I got a call back from the brokerage, and they said, we canceled your agreement. Uh, we don't want you unhappy with us. And she said, how would you like to? You know, I didn't even have to get a chance to ask her. She says, how would you like to help me sell? I was like, great. So just from door knocking, knocking, but keep in mind, guys, it was about problem solving because she said to me, but I want to buy before I sell. So I, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't realize that that's going to be a tough deal. So I took her out and a couple offers, they said, look, we're not going to deal with contingent on the sale of your home. So then I sold her home the second month I was in business. And then two months after that, I helped her buy a house. So it can happen. Get out there, use social media. It's free. I'm trying to get this thing to move along, you guys. And it is just a problem. Let me try again. So note, notice, you guys, that sellers value the same things, the reputation of the agent, your experience. So, by the way, if you have experience in other business, you can use that. Some of your clients, some of your friends are going to remember that when they worked with you before at, you know, Apple or NVIDIA or wherever it is you worked at before, it doesn't matter if it was at Target. Just remember that people have understand your reputation wherever you go. That's why you want to be nice to people everywhere you go. Because people will remember you and they'll want to do business with you. So you can use that experience. You can use your negotiation skills, your your kindness, your communication. In whatever business you were in before, you can bring that to the table now. And then on the right-hand side here, sellers, you know, they want to deal with a, somebody who's going to give them a decent commission. We're going to talk about that. And then they want to deal with a particular firm. One of the reasons why I left Legacy and came back to Keller Williams is because I got tired of saying, hi, my name is Yvette Peterson and was Legacy Real Estate. Oh, yeah, Legacy Real Estate. We're a company mostly known on the East Bay. I just got tired of it. I wanted to be a company that was known everywhere and Keller Williams was. Um, they were a great firm, by the way, but they just did not deliver on the value that and the education that I needed. Um, they want people, like we said, that are accessible to you. Um, and you can guide them in how you do that. And they want people that have professional designations. By the way, you can make any of this an excuse as to why you don't have business. I don't have a professional designation. Yes, I do. I'm a realtor. But, I mean, I don't have the S, the senior designations or um, luxury designations. And yet I've sold a $3.5 million. I've sold a $2.5 million. So it has nothing to it, – it's about who you're being and how you're being and what value you're bringing to your clients. So just remember that. So real estate has undergone significant changes over the past few years. And in some parts of the U.S., investors have come in with the intent to disrupt the industry, and they have in some areas, but not in ours. I buyers are there to drive down commission prices. And some companies are moving towards eliminating the agent altogether. I keep hearing about Zillow is now becoming a competitor. Well, I don't care because I'm going to be the best agent I can be, and I'm not going to focus too much on them. But we just need to know who our competition is out there. So who do you guys see as your greatest competition when you are trying to get a listing, say, or a buyer? So let's talk about listings. Who's your biggest competition that you feel like you lose out to? Experienced agents. Okay, that's a good one. That was my struggle. Yeah. Anything else? I just else, lost guys? one to the church. I just lost one listing opportunity I was chasing to the church friend of the person that passed away. So the oh. guy had a stronger relationship already with oh. someone else. And I, 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 I'd love to have another crack at it. I might, I might take a different approach. But yeah, yeah, you've got to, stuff. you've got, we would love to hear that get turned around, Mark. That'd be awesome. Um, so relationship and experienced agents, what else is there? 
Um, this is Marna. I We actually just lost the listing and it was because the client um, wanted us to upfront money to fix the roof and the porch. And another agent was actually giving them up to $75,000 so they can fix the house and then put it on the market. Wow. Wow. Is Donna on the call? Donna, are you here? No. Um, Donna will tell you what I just told somebody. Um, that we were on a listing presentation call via Zoom and they said um, they, they, they were all gone home. I told them why we need to do five and a half percent. Um, they agreed with everything. And then they got off the phone and in the morning we woke up to an email that said, hey, all of these repairs that we need to do the house, will you do it As, and, and pay for it? And my response back was no. We do not pay for client updates um, without reimbursement in escrow. I have no problem paying for the update as long as in, it's in the contract and you'll pay me back in escrow. And, um, and then I went on to say though, but here are the things that we will do for you. They signed the listing agreement the next day. Now, part of it is what the value that we brought. They wanted that, this property up within three weeks, and we're going to accomplish that for them. And that's with moving out to tenant and all kinds of problems with the property. So I love that you stood your ground, though, because those discount agents are a problem for us. And, and I'm going to also show you how you can get around it. I teach a class on negotiating your commission. Or, yeah, negotiating your commission. Um, I have ha had one discount commission ever in my life, and it was to my mother-in-law. And trust me on this, you never want to do that, not even to family. Sometimes they're the biggest pain in the butt. Um, she was not. She was actually really, she's a commercial realtor, so she was not a pain to deal with. She understood the process. But, man, she could beat you up on commission. And I just, it was my first year. It was my second listing, and I just, I let her beat me up, unfortunately. I learned, and I've never done that again, but if you take a look at my commission that I get paid, and the brokerage has a history of my commission, I get paid anywhere from 6.5% to 5.5%. I don't even do 5%. And when I teach that class, which hopefully I'll do in the next couple of months, you'll see how I do it and how I address discount commissions and how I went out over some of those competitors. I don't win out every time, guys. We're not, we're not going to win every time, and that's okay. They're going to get what they pay for. Move on to the next one. Your mindset has to be, nope, oh, wrong client, move on. Okay? So Redfin is one that we see a lot. And Redfin, remember, their tagline is, we, and their whole value proposition is this. We built Redfin to get you a better deal through technology that gets results, through local agents on your side, and through savings at every step. This is what they, they use. So, I'm trying to move ahead here. So, sorry. Oh, come on. So how do we counter them? We deliver value that is better than their value. I know for a fact that Redfin agents are difficult to get hold of after certain times in the day. Nine to six, some of the really good ones are available afterwards. But anytime I see a Redfin listing and I have to call the agent, it is like a nightmare for me getting hold of them. And also the one thing I learned from having listings is that the agents, the Redfin agents that are showing up when we had open houses are showing agents. Some of them don't know much. They just stand there and follow the person around and they can't guide them. So you've got to make sure that you tell them. I think, Brian, you recently had an experience, right, with somebody who you went out yes. to who had a Redfin agent and was frustrated with them. Can you give that story really briefly? Sure. Uh, it was a friend of mine who actually sold his house with a Redfin agent and was looking to purchase his next home um, with Redfin. Now, Redfin is convenient because their website is great and their app is great, um, but 
coming to actual so when it comes to actual service to the client um, is where they are severely lacking. Um, it, their website was convenient because their my client could get, could go and select times when they want to view home, but that doesn't mean they get that, that appointment for that time. That just sends out a message to whatever agents are available. Say, for example, they want to see a home at 7 p.m. Monday night. Um, whoever, whatever agents available will respond to that and then make an appointment to try to get that time. So the, the big lag, big gap in communication, and for the most part, none of their agents want to show homes at 7 o'clock at night um, on Monday. So he became very frustrated, and that's um, where I was able to step in and help him out. So I, I took him over. There you time. go. Well, thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. So remember, guys, part of overcoming discount agents is understanding and demonstrating our value to a client like Brian was doing and seeing your own value. Please don't sell yourself short at all. Is Kenny on the call? Yeah, I'm here, Yvette. So um, Kenny's going to have to expose himself on this one here. Sorry, Kenny. Um, but um, what I mean by don't sell yourself short is Kenny um, started out last year just really in a struggle. He got into March, and I don't know if you had had one transaction by March. Did you, Kenny? No, not till June. Okay, so imagine this. Kenny's just struggling, right? And so what happens is he runs into these two guys that he's helping, and he's doing great with them, and then Kenny tells Tell them what happened and what you did with the whole discount thing. Um, I ran across uh, a conversation where it was unexpected and um, he had brought in another friend. He kind of led you as a two for one to be able to give both of them. Um, at the time, you know, I was uh, spelling and um, thought it was a good deal. And, and, uh, yeah. uh, and then I had a conversation with Yvette and uh, I quickly learned that, you know, I don't want to lessen myself in terms of not being able to provide value and I don't want it, that reputation to kind of stay with me. Um, so I had to quickly had another conversation with them and, um, and put my value back on the table and also regain my reputation. Yeah. So uh, let me, let me summarize that really quickly. Kenny gets a two for one. Friend says, Hey, if you give me a discount, I'll get, we'll both use you. Kenny doesn't tell me because Kenny's going, man, I'm hurting. I need some business. And then when Kenny finally tells me, he goes, man, you know, this happened. And I'm kind of not, I just kind of know what you're going to say, but you know, I just, I need business. And I said, look at him and I said, Kenny, what's your value? You know, it's like, what are you worth here? Do you think you're a discount agent? And do you want to be known as a discount agent? And he's like, no. And I said, well, then you, this is going to give you an opportunity to grow and to develop your value and show people your value. And more importantly, it's going to give Kenny an opportunity to remember what he, who he is and to think highly of himself so highly that he won't discount. So Kenny went another three months without business, but you know who won the award at Keller Williams Santa Clara Valley for the, for the most growth in one year, Kenny Han. He just got the real, the award. So he, killed it and now he's he just closed on another one he's closing on the 3.4 million dollar one in a week or this week i think kenny it's friday so friday right so that didn't come about because he just took just decided to take the first one that comes along and beats him down on price the skilled agents are going to show up in this time the skilled agents are the ones that are going to be able to develop their value and deliver that value. And that was a hard lesson for Kenny. And I remember having some sleepless nights like, oh my God, he's on my team. He's a friend. He's going to hate me if he doesn't get any business. <laughs> but I just knew that he was capable of it. And then he, with, between my coaching and thank God, also um, Mark Burstein's coaching, he picked up Mark as a coach in June, June or May, May or yeah. June, somewhere around there. And we all did. We all, everybody on my team switched over to got Mark as a coach. Um, my business has gone through the roof. And even if I may add, um, that was one of the hardest, hardest conversations I believe you and I ever had. Um, and 
but it was also worth it because I think you also showed me my value and what I'm also worth. So that was really important to me as well. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kenny. So, I mean, guys, if you want people around you who believe in you and who will show you how to become more skilled, do not settle for just giving away your money. That doesn't take any skill. Okay. And again, I'm going to teach that class in negotiation and you just have to believe in yourself and it will pay off. It will pay off. Trust me on this one. Does anybody have some quest any questions right now? Yes, Yvette. So how does that work with family and friends? Because that's the first question that pops up. So uh, for someone who's brand new, I cannot say no. So how do I oh, kind oh, of do no, that? No, 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 stop, stop, stop. To somebody who's brand new, you can definitely say no. You can say no if you're brand new. You can say no if you're not. So it's, you know, I, I am willing to sit down with you one-on-one -on, -one on this one, but let me just say this. Yes, this is about mindset. Have you taken bold as yet? No, not yet. You will take bold and you will come out of it a different person. It won't just happen one time. Sometimes you have to take these classes two or three times. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 36. Oh, you're a child. I'm 60. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 61. Darn it, I just turned 61. Um, oh, I haven't gotten used nice. to that number yet. So you're still a baby. <laughs> so um, you have so much. Thing. You have. But so, you know what? It's your mindset, right? You've had 30 something years of telling yourself a certain thing. And then you have, you, you've got to be able to deliver to your clients. You've got to let them see their, your value. There are three different ways that you can actually share, a, have a response. There's a $3 bill response. Have you seen that with the $3, three $1 bills? Uh, you mean the distribution, the tranche, how it goes? Okay, I saw that. I learned yeah. it from Sheila yeah. the other there's, day. There, there, there's, an, there's another one that you can do too, where you need to show them that this money is your money and not their money. So let me let me tell you the, the I've only had two people ask me for a discount. And the first person that asked me for a discount asked me while I, after I found the house for them. And they, I was writing up the offer and they called me and said, so Yvette, um, the other agent I was working with before you said that they were going to give me a discount. And I was quiet. I didn't respond. I was just like, well, I didn't say anything. And he said, and it was an awkward silence. And he goes, so would you give me a discount? And I said, no, Abhishek, I won't do, I won't do that. And he said, but why not? They said they do it. And they said, did that agent find you the house? I said, no. And he said, I found you the house. I said, what do you want? Do you want the house or do you want some money back in your pocket? Because I can get you in this house. He goes, well, I, I want the house. And they said, okay, tell you what, if we don't get into this house here, you and I will have another conversation. And I wasn't going to discount my, my commission to him at all, but I just let him know, I'm going to find you the house. That's my value. And then he came back and picked up the phone again and called me one more time. And he says, you know, but Yvette, my wife really thinks that you should give us some money back. You're making a lot of money. <clears throat> and I said, do you think you make a lot of money as an engineer? And he says, I do, okay. And he said, let me ask you a question. Your boss comes to you, your client comes to you and says, hey, I'd like a piece of your, your salary. Did they earn it? And he goes, no. I said, I've earned my money for you. And he goes, Okay, that's fair. And I said, if your wife needs to talk to me, tell her to give me a call. I'd be happy to explain it to her. That was the end of the conversation. I never heard back. Those guys are my loyal friends. I mean, I go over to their house for all, I go over for birthdays, and they're constantly referring me out because of the job I did for them and the price <laughs> point I got them into Santa Clara at. So okay. it's a mindset thing. Trust me, I will work with you. We're a very given agent agency. Everybody here is willing to share. So I will be glad to put aside a little bit of time to share with you. But I also know that they've got, I'm going to make a plug for the coaches here. We have two great coaches. We have Roberta 
and we have uh, Mark Burstein, who happens to be our coach for our team here. Uh, we meet with him every two weeks. He holds us accountable. accountable. And um, guys, never in a million years would I think that I would have done as well as I did last year in real estate. They had all kinds of categories as to what they're going to give you awards in. And um, the award I got put me in the top category with Alan Wang. I never thought in a million years I could come near to Alan Wang. And I'm still really not that near to him, but I'm separated far enough from the rest of the team. And here's the thing. I listen to my coach. My coach says to me, you are to focus on listening. You need to give up most of your buyers unless they're personal friends. I'm doing it. I am just, I'm no excuse. I'm not not saying to him, but Mark, I need that money. He's saying the money you need to focus on is over here. It's listings. Go get them. Well, we just picked up two more listings, right? It just signed off on two more listings in the last couple of weeks. And that is because my mindset, I go to bed at nighttime and I wake up in the morning. I do an affirmation. My affirmation is this. I am the greatest listing agent there is out there. Guys, I'm just going to keep telling myself that, right, over and over. And I'm going to tell anybody who wants to listen that. So you have got to develop a mindset. This is, if you don't see your value, you can't deliver value. So um, I'm going to briefly talk, I'm going to move along here and briefly talk about technology. We're not going to actually jump on. I'm sorry, what was that? I said, thank you. That insight helps a lot. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking the question. Um, So as far as technology goes, let's recognize that one of the reasons why Redfin does well is because they have that great app. They have an amazing app. And Keller Williams recognizes. Sorry, guys, I am choking on something. And they recognize that people want to just hop on their whatever technology they have and access the um, the websites that have homes for sale. And so we have to be a tech enabled agent. And Keller Williams is really focused on getting us getting us there. The company is committed to adding to your value proposition. And that's why they're working so hard on command. Is command perfect? No, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I have some frustrations with it, but overall, pretty darn good. we got to use it. I don't use it nearly as much as, say, Brian or Kenny uses it. Not nearly as much. As a matter of fact, it's one of my big downfalls. And if you don't use it, you will find yourself either having to have a super good memory and things are going to fall through the cracks. Um. And I don't want to see that happen to anybody. Right now, I take a lot of notes, and it's just, it's not good. I'm ridiculously old school in that way. Um, Brian tries to make me feel good every so often and tell me, hey, you're not that, you know, you are actually tech savvy. Um, I just don't, I just don't like doing the data. So that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to find a virtual assistant or somebody who can fill out the data for me. It's not something I enjoy doing at all. So, but with command, you can have agent sites, you can have individual IDX sites. Is that true, Brian? And and you can have your agent sites, right? Each agent has their own site from KW. Okay, so if you don't know how to do that, guy, and have your own site, then you should reach out to your tech ambassador, which I think is Srini over at Keller Williams. Santa Silicon City and Maha and also Brian helps out also at Santa Clara Valley or or go or start with your team leaders. Hilda and Bob will be happy to direct you and sit down and make sure you understand this as well. So again, I want to remind you guys, please go to your um, go to your workbook and take a look at this. Normally we would have an activity at this time where we split apart can't do it. So let's go on to this last piece. Let's look at what delivering on your value statement means. 
Um, does anybody know or recall what KW stance is on integrity? What does it say on our walls? Okay, it says integrity in all things. Right, so there it is. Win, win or no deal, integrity, do the right thing. I'm sorry, integrity, do the right thing. It doesn't, which is in all things. And customers always come first. Commitment in all things. That's where I got that from. Sorry, I mixed that up. Communication, seek first to understand. Creativity, ideas before results. Teamwork, together everyone achieves more. And trust starts with honesty. So these are all things that you can use in your value statement, right? But you have got to be able to distinguish yourself with the information you know. A value proposition isn't just something you say, it's something you deliver on. If you guys listen to me, you will hear that I understand my value. I understand what I bring to the client. But I will tell you that I wasn't like this my first year. You will grow into it. So don't say it's because of your personality, Yvette. Part of it is, but not entirely. If I took a look at what, you know, what the story Kenny just told you, guys, I remember it was a, such a tough conversation I had with him about, you know, and it was a stern conversation about his value and how and what he was which side of the fence he was joining on in this in our real estate pool. We want to elevate the way people see realtors and not be in the part where people are just discounting and not doing their job correctly. And I can almost walk through some of these properties and tell which ones are discounted. So um, you should be able to explain your value, like I say. So what kind of knowledge are we expected to have? Can you guys throw that out there? I want to hear 10 answers. And so what kind of knowledge do you guys think we're expected to have when we're dealing with clients? The condition of the market. Excellent. What else? Oh, our contract. I'm sorry, I missed that. I heard two people. Yvette, it's me, Lupita. We should know our legal and our contracts and how to protect our clients and ourselves. Absolutely, Lupita. Excellent. Vasu, did you say something? Yes. Uh, understand uh, what the clients need to be educated on and prepare for that. Very true. Very true. Anybody else? Rob, what do you got? Rob Lee? Oh, I'm so going to get them busted. What do you mean? I'm here. <laughs> okay, Rob. Okay, I'm Rob. I just wanted to pick up the phone and uh, hit the button and, geez, give me a second. <laughs> okay, Rob, come on. What do you got? What's the question again? Oh, see? <laughs> Dang. So what is what are you expecting to know as a realtor? What am I expected to know as a realtor? Yes. How to best what are take care of my you clients? Should the, you should... How to Say best take care of my clients? Excellent. That is so true. What about you, Nick? Uh, we should know our worth and what value we provide to the clients. Love it, Nick. Thank you. What What do you think, um, Kenny, Anna, Brian? Uh, just be mindful of our fiduciary duties every day. Yeah. Mark I'll or Bob? Not the entire What it takes to sell. Mm -hmm. Mine would be strategies to get my client the best possible deal. Great. I heard somebody else speak. There's a guy that just spoke, but I don't know who it was. It was me. I said, we have to know what sells and what smells. <laughs> So true. So true. Good resources. So, yeah. Yeah. Resources are important, right? I mean, those are the things that people don't even think think about. But your fiduciary role 
you want to end up becoming, if you, if there's an area that you want to specialize in, you should really pick that area and become the hyper local expert in, in that area. You can go, you can, if you are renting in a, that in a place that has an HOA, go to the HOA meetings. Brian just purchased a, uh, a property that he and his wife and kids moved into and it's got, it's a, got an HOA and it's got lots of neighbors. That's just tons of opportunity right there. So you want to understand everything about that neighborhood as well. Um, you want to know things like the interest rate. Um, every Monday morning, there's a listing club. So go there and learn about the market trends. Um, make sure your knowledge is up to date, guys. Um, these are the things that are important. There's the city council. Let me ask you guys a question. There's this little place called downtown San Jose. What if you had people that were interested in downtown San Jose? What not? What one thing that we do we know that's going to be happening close to downtown San Jose that might be of interest to your clients? Googleplex. What did you say? The Googleplex. Googleplex. That's right. So what Googleplex immediately you can associate that with the possibility of home values going up. So right now, um, we just we're closing on a listing in San, downtown San Jose, and that just went for a ridiculous price for a two bedroom one bath. Just ridiculous um, price, a million thirty. Um, the two bedroom across the street went for nine twenty five. We got ours for a million thirty, so over a hundred thousand dollars above. And the one that Kenny is actually Kenny's there now. I can look at the background. He's at our new listing. Um, is where he's at in the backyard. <laughs> and um, thanks, Kenny, for doing that. And Kenny is um, Kenny's aware that that we are we're trying to get top dollar for this listing too. So we're trying to sell as much as we can in downtown San Jose. It's a hot market, you guys. It's so hot. So use the information that you find to connect it to your clients. So if your clients are looking in downtown San Jose and they don't understand why prices are going so much, explain to them, well, Google Plex is coming in. So they're anticipating that more people will want to move to get downtown San Jose, therefore increasing the value of the homes there. So that's really important. So let's go on to the next one. I've got everybody's faces up. I so much prefer to see your faces. Um, but hey, now I've got to reduce you. Can I have one quick that just came into my mind about, about something? Sure. All right. I know that uh, a lot of us are worried that we see the news about companies moving here and there. And, I, and I'm glad we have Bob on the call here because Bob has been in, in high tech for, for many, many years and built teams in that space. And one thing that just came into my mind is all these top level engineers, I mean, do they stick with and stay with one company for 20 years these days? Or are they constantly on the move? No. I would I'm say, Jeff Bob, what do you say? Uh, one in 10 will stay more than five years. Right? So if yeah, people are constantly on the move, and you have a company that moves out of the area, are those people gonna move out with them or are they gonna stay here where they have a myriad of 20 or 30 companies to choose from? So I'm finding that that's a mixed answer. Generally speaking, they'll try and stay here if they're happy with their living situation. But there's a major shift right now. Austin is now the center of seed funds for startups. It's no longer the Bay Area. So this is a new statistic I just ran across last week. So you're gonna see a trend as people who have made it in high tech, a couple of good stock bumps in big companies, and they are very likely to follow something to Austin and actually physically go. This idea of yeah. telecommuting is only gonna work for a very short period of time. That's a sine wave. Oh yeah, we'll all telecommute. Oh wait, that didn't work. We all need to be in the office. Oh wait, let's tell it to you. And it's on about a three-year cycle. Does that help? Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna rein it back in. I agree with you guys. Um, I 
I will just say this. I've got a decline calls that are coming in. Um, I will say this. My husband is a commercial um, realtor. And um, we are definitely, I am definitely getting some other news that kind of some of it backs up what Bob's saying. And then when we're out there, though, guys selling, what are we seeing right now? How many buyers are, are losing out? How many offers are we seeing per transaction or per, per offer? Many, many buyers. Um, last time I had 17 other buyers. Yeah. So I'm seeing 29. I just lost out on, it was 30 offers. We decided not to put a, put an offer in on the property, um, this last property on Cooper. They ended up with 35 buyers. So let me tell you what, and here's the thing is, I love news and all of that, but I do not let that determine how my business is going to happen. Right now, for every offer that F offer date that's out there, we're seeing anywhere from 15, especially when you're dealing with single family homes from 15 to 30 plus. I've heard as high as 50 offers. And so those, those are the amount of buyers that are still out looking. We don't have enough listings. So we need to go out there and get listings for these buyers, right? That's what we need to do. But undoubtedly there's a shift in the, econo the economy However, my husband in commercial real estate is all of a sudden busy again, showing people um, places to rent or to lease because these companies would prefer to have all their engineers here. Google has, is doing something a little interesting. A little tidbit my husband gave me is that Google is actually getting apartment complexes and they are going to actually house their people who decide to move away. They have to come back to the Bay Area and work because they cannot do, they cannot do all of their work from a distance. And so they like them to come back and stay for a month. So they're going to put them up in, in apartment complexes. So that's going to be another trend and interesting thing that we see happening. But as much as we hear that people are moving out, guys, we're seeing a ton of buyers looking for property here. Hundreds and hundreds of buyers looking for property. Okay. So um, let's, uh, let me see. I'm sorry. I got a little sidetracked here. That was good information. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. So the three aspects of service, knowing the purpose of real estate, your value proposition, and your fiduciary role. These all contribute to the same goal, which is ensuring the best experience for your clients. So now that you understand the three aspects, it's up to you to deliver the best experience you can. It doesn't really matter if you have all these wonderful things written down. If you don't follow through on them, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if um, a political party or a religious group says these are the things that we value if we see people doing the opposite of what they value, what do we think of them? We think hypocrites, right? It's the same with the realtor. If we see a realtor doing the very opposite thing of what they say they value, we're going to think they're a hypocrite. Nobody's going to want to do business with them. So um, I'm going to throw this one at Mark as a coach. Mark, what qualifies as an excellent real estate experience from the, from the buyer point of view? What qualifies as an excellent real estate experience? Today, I would say getting somebody into contract. Um, just because that's the, the biggest challenge right now for a lot of buyers agents with the amount of competition that's there. But I would say, A, you have to be available to your clients so that on their schedule, so that when they're ready to see properties, you're able to, to meet them and show them what's necessary to be shown. And then to be able to properly guide them through the disclosures, because that's all you get these days, right? If you're looking to acquire property and actually win, you know, contingencies aren't really flying these days, but the people are giving us, the listing agents are giving us enough information. It, how many, you know, most cases we get all the inspections, the professional inspections, home inspection, termite, roof, right? So then we have to guide our clients through those inspections and help them understand what's big and what's little and then help them negotiate the best terms and a winning 
the winning number without grossly. You're going to overpay a little. That's just the reality. Without grossly overpaying, let's put it that way. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. The other things that you can do as well, guys, are really simple. Is you can build a team of allied resources. Um, that you can leverage to, you know, improve the client experience. That means good title companies, good stagers, landscapers, cleaners, uh, carpet cleaners, home inspectors, movers. Um, the other thing you can do is you can build relationships um, with business in, in town that people might need after they move. This could be doctors or dentists, uh, hairstylists, pet services. And hand this out to your client. You're going to go above and beyond. Some of the things we also do is we um, we will do pot buys. So it's not a done deal. We stay in touch with our clients. We give them an experience after they've even moved in. On Valentine's Day, we dropped off cocoa bombs for our clients. They loved it. They just love the fact that we're even thinking of them. Because what we're saying to them is we're not one and done. We want to be your realtor for life. Isn't that what we said? Peterson Realty Team, your go-to realtor for life, right? So we're showing that by giving them an experience after they're in the house. So you should you should do that as well. So um, that's kind of it. So what I want to do, though, is I want to um, share with you guys a couple of things that we do as well. So we're going to pop back on, oh, not on, um, here we go. Let me share this with you. So I believe Keller Williams has a system within command. Brian, am I right where they can put systems together? Is that true or not? Yeah, check this within command, yes. Okay, so there's a checklist. Here's how we do it. This is a free service. This is NoteJoy. I'm actually thinking of switching to somebody else, but um, here is where we put together everything we need. So we have questions for vetting our contractors. It's all here. If you do something more than once, put it a system in place. This is what we call a system. This means that we thought everything through, and you can see here, if any of us is going to get a contractor, we can hand this out to a client and say, here's how you bet a contractor. Okay? Um, let's go to another one. This is when we had open houses. We had a checklist. What to do to prepare. What to do on the day of the open house. And what to do after the open house. Then we have... Oops. We have a listing system. So here's a listing system for the one of the projects we're doing right now. This is coming out next week. Um, uh, yeah, next week. So we convert the lead to listing appointment. We schedule the listing appointment, and then we get the names of the people, the email addresses. We say, is it going to be on the MLS? We go through the whole thing. When's the listing? Is it signed? We're not moving forward till it's signed. And then we just mark it market through all the way through we know who does what donna does something based on a particular color i do some something based on a particular color and we just go through our entire checklist this way we're holding each other accountable to getting this done and getting it done properly the things that are here in yellow that are not crossed through are still needed so the pre-listing checklist all of this needs to be done still right so this is all easy. This is the uh, all easy to, and to be done. Sorry. Um, we have a how to get started guide. We have all of our office applications. We have our vendor resource list. So we can we can tell people. Anybody in our team can go to this list, or we can hand out a home cleaner, an inspector to somebody, movers, painters handymen, so put a system in place, lenders, lending contacts, and these are people who are tried and true with us, title companies, um, transaction coordinators, everything all the way through, 
the other thing that I talked to you about in running our business is that, sorry, is that we also keep track of, here it is, you know, team template. We also have um, a tracker for our goals and what we're doing month by month, right? So this is our goals for last year. So we would fill it out month by month by month. So my goal was to do 7.2 million in sellers and 8.6 million in buyers. I did 10.375 in buyers and 5.874. So we keep track of it month by month. And we look at it just the way Keller Williams tells us to look at it. How many appointments do we have booked? How many did we execute? How many agreements did we sign? How many offers did we get accepted? How many transactions? And as we do it, this counts down, it says what's left over. I was short 1.346 million here, but I was over 1.775 million. So Mark yeah. looked at my goals as my coach and he said, you need to improve this. Good job, but improve this because you need to be a listing agent. You need to be the rainmaker. So that's why I have four transactions that are going to be wrapped up this month and all of them have been listing. And I have two more coming on, all of them are listings. I am working with two buyers right now, but my other buyers are going out to the rest of the team. Yvette, I think you're showing so, the wrong screen. Oh, am I? Yeah, you're, only, you're showing a, a screen with Zoom on it, not the not the. Oh, my, my deepest apologies, guys. <laughs> my deepest apologies. So that didn't work. So um, let me let me just quickly show you this. This should be easy to be able to pull up again. Um, it's really important that you track your numbers. And I got to tell you guys, we were kind of flailing along for the first three years, but we no longer are. We are definitely operating on a couple cylinders not all four cylinders yet but we're getting there can um so brian can you see this excel no okay so forget it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at this point basically um we have a spreadsheet you guys and i can maybe i can i think we're going to be opening up eventually sometime this year and i can do a class where everybody can see how we do things but if you need help, we are a very helpful group of people. I am over at Keller Williams Santa Clara Valley, but uh, Lupita can tell you that she called me and we spent a couple hours on the phone, an hour and a half on the phone going through how to do this. And we are more than willing to help. But I, let me tell you your go-to people. Keller Williams Santa Clara Valley, it is Rob, Bob Silk, the team leader, and Hilda over at Silicon City. Your coach at Silicon City is, it can be either one, I guess, but it's, uh, you've got Roberta over there and we have Mark Burstein. Mark Burstein is our broker. So um, I don't know if Bob or Mark, you want to say anything in regards to if people have questions, how they can contact you. Email or phone. Yeah, absolutely. Either one. Yeah, email or phone is the best way. We can schedule a consultation. Initial consultations are, are always complimentary and we can see what we can do about planning a course for your business. Thanks, Mark. Bob? Same, email or phone. Uh, we can definitely, if I can't answer the question or if it runs uh, wide of my expertise, I will get a referral for you and get it quickly. So Great, Hilda? Thanks, Bob. You are always there. Hilda? Good morning, everyone. You can call us, email us, find us on social media anytime. Thank you, Yvette, for a wonderful morning. Wonderful. Does anybody have any last minute questions for me? Yes, I do. Hey, Yvette, where did you find that list builder? Where did I find what? The list builder you're showing us where you had different colors for everybody. You had it in command. Oh, that is Notejoy. 
is NoteJoy, and it is free. Alan Wang turned me on to that. It's NoteJoy.com. And you can it's just go in there and put command. up. No, it is not part of command. I'm sorry, guys. You might want to talk to your command person first. That would be Srini or Maha and ask them if they have an area for checklists. I think um, in order to um, use Brian, you would have to go through um, Bob Stoltz if you want to hire Brian. Um, I know that Brian actually gets hired out. And Bob, if you want to quickly talk about that. Uh, Brian well, first, a minute. Wait a minute, Bob, just a minute. Um, first, go to your team leaders to discuss if there's a free version through command that you can use. Um, and then Bob can talk to you about commands also. Brian is available. He and I have developed a subscription system for having on-site help so that you can get answers quickly uh, on the phone, IM, emails. We have a way to set up through subscription your command so everything gets imported and he will teach you how to work it. And the third subscription we have is to not only put all your information in, but run it turnkey as a subscription ongoing. Any questions, contact me. Okay, so you can contact Hilda or Bob as the team leaders. You can contact Mark Burstein as well. He is our, um, and, and I think there's Roberta, but uh, productivity coach. And also Mark is the broker of record or um, I think, right? Okay, fantastic. And does anybody else have any other questions? Any last thoughts? Yes, Yvette. So how much time did it take you to become really confident? Because I'm starting out and I'm complete newbie to real estate. So how much time on average does it take to go and be confident about my own value proposition? So I'm gonna post something. I'm gonna share our team thing. Um, <laughs> We're not always good at this, but what we're trying to do is develop good habits. And so I have a daily habit tracker, and uh, this is something that we're supposed to use. Some of us, again, are better than others, but when we do our review at the end of the quarter, we're going to be able to see why you're doing well or not doing well. And that daily tracker, I just, I wish I could share my, I, I don't know why I cannot share my screen. And and do this. Brian, could you share the screen and do it if I made you the host? This is so helpful. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to make um, Brian the host here and let him share our screen. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to need Jacqueline to make him the host. All right, let me um, do that. So, okay, great. So let me just say this, habits are everything, you guys. Habits are everything. So for example, Kenny makes it a habit to be at the office somewhere before 9 a.m. or right at 9 a.m. Um, Monday through Friday, typically, at least four days out of the week, he's there. Um, and it's about building good habits. So take a look at this here. And this is a checklist. And at the bottom, it has, um, is this yours, Brian? Great, perfect. So, um, no, I appreciate you putting this up on the screen. So you can see here that um, it says here that the, really the way we should start the days with affirmations. See the second one that says mindset here? Affirmation. So um, we're, we're just gonna, we're gonna run through this really quickly. So, um, Brian and Kenny, let's throw out some affirmation. Let's just do them quickly. I am the best listing agent out there. Kenny. I am a great listener and will provide great value to my clients. Brian. I'm a champion for my clients' needs. You're a what? Champion for my clients' needs. Yeah, so stand in front of that mirror, you guys, and say it. I'm a great listing agent. I'm a champion for my, my clients. You're not going to believe this. Till, you're not going to believe this till you tell yourself this enough if you don't think this already. So you've just got to tell yourself this enough over and over. 
I have watched both Brian and Kenny change and myself change, and it's because we do this. So that's with the affirmation. Read something motivational. Once a week, we have a team meeting. On Fridays at every 1130, we have a team meeting. And we everybody starts off with a, an inspirational video. We talk about why it's inspiration to us. We have, we have vision boards. So, sorry, my husband just pulled down my vision board. But I've got a vision board here. <laughs> so, I mean, there are things that I have that I look at, I want to see before me that are, you know, that are important to me. I want to, I need to know what my big why is. What is your big why? So we have some work to do. All of us have some work to do. The classes are going to be provided at both campuses for you to be able to um, understand your big why, understand how important mindset is, how to improve your mindset. Start off, you can do it very simply. Go on Google and look for tan, look for affirmations for real realtors. Print it out and stick it on your bathroom mirror. When you wake up in the morning and you're about, about to brush your teeth, say that first, say 10 of them before you brush your teeth. Um, it works, I'm telling you. But take a look at what else we've got here. Um, go back to the top, the lead gem. Number one focus, right? Make calls, 10 calls and 10 texts. Weekly, that's not true. That's daily. Ten calls and ten texts. <laughs> if you could change that, uh, Brian, if you can change that um, daily, right? So you can see, though, we don't always do it. So look at the numbers that that you know Brian's putting in. He starts off with January, and he shows 11, um, 25, 18, 19, 15. So then we figure out what were we con? We tried to do note cards, right? If you want to do note cards, you've got to have your note cards here in front of you. So I have my note cards sitting right in front of me. Set up your debt for success. Um, then you go along here, you can see what appointments were set. So the first week, really slow, but you kind of take a look at what's going on here. And the second week, you have an appointment and you execute an appointment. The next week, you have an appointment and you execute a command appointment. Ryan's really good about using command updates. Every time he does, set up, he has a call, he puts it in command, and he sets up a smart plan for that. So that way he doesn't have to think about it again, right? So um, then go on down a little bit, Brian. Oh, we want to make sure that you're doing Zoom in-person visits. So if you can't do an in-person visit, you can't sit in the park across from somebody, then we would do Zoom visits. I would tell my friends, great, you know, um, some people, I don't do this all the time, but a couple of friends, I've dropped up a coffee outside their front door and I brought a chair and I sat 20 feet away and we had a conversation for 45 minutes. There are things you can do, guys, and we are open up. You can go grab a coffee with somebody if you feel safe to do so. Um, and then you go on down a little bit, Brian, and limit time. So when it comes to the Facebook stuff, Limit time to more than 30 minutes. We don't always obey this, but wish your friends happy birthday. Um, like your friends' posts and drop a brief comment on there. Um, post something personalized, encouraging on your Facebook page once a week. Let them know that you are a realtor by what you're posting. So we have a checklist that we go down. And there's a tab for each one of us. You can see it's on the bottom. The tab says Brian, Donna, Kenny, Yvette. And then we archive, we just archive it as we go along. At the end of the day, you're supposed to organize your desk, update your calendar, and review your days. So because even though you've been doing this for a long time, you tend sometimes to forget. So we just have a system in place that we can pull up, and then Donna, who's our director of operations, you know, she has no problem giving us a, a little bit of a expansion if we don't do this and keeping us on track. So this is all very important. Brian, you want to quickly jump to the KPIs and I'll show them really quickly how we track what we're doing. And I know there's some questions about NoteJoy. We develop those checklists ourselves. Those are not in NoteJoy. We sat down. It took a lot of time and I paid somebody to sit with me and do that. So, um, Brian, if you could quickly just pop on over to the KPIs. Um, isn't this the KPIs? I'm sorry. I just 
I think my uh, my phone just went. I'm sorry. The KPI. Oh, um, oh yes, yes, yes. Got it. This is also important to you guys. I'm kind of giving you a little sneak peek into what we've developed over the years, which I hope is helpful to you. Um, because most of us come into this business and we have no clue what we're doing. And I think as we go along, we're going to try and systemize things. I know Bob is trying to systemize things. So, you know, he can help agents as they come on board. I'm sure Hilda is doing the same over there um, where we can give you some better tools to help you. So here is how we track our business. Is this our 20? Um, could you go back and show the show uh, 2020, 2020? Can you go back and just do 2020 since that's a complete year? I can show them. Sure. Thank you. Okay. And the, you go back. I'll be right back. So this, you know, this all takes time, guys. So I can understand why people drop out of this business or flail around this business because they don't want to take the time to do the right things first. And you have to. Um, it's a pain in the butt, but it is so worth it. If you need help, reach out to you know, to the experienced agents, agents around you, we will help you get there. But I know that our team has improved over last year. Um, so Brian's working on it. So lest you not believe it, last year um, in 2019, I was at the awards dinner. Um, we were all Silicon City at that time. And I watched, it was my second time at the awards dinner and they announced the top, is it the top 12 Hilda that they do, did? Or yes, was it 20, uh, top 12? Uh, it's the top 12, the chairman's club. The chairman's club. And so it was the top 12, but they had you know people there and we got to watch the awards. And for two years, I just started in October. So in January, I saw this and I said, oh, oh my goodness, I, gotta, I, I wanna be there. I want to be one of the top 12. And the next year, guess what? I wasn't one of the top 12. And I just kept, you know, trucking away at it. I got a coach, got Mark Burstein as a coach and fired things up. And the only person that was ahead of me at Silicon, at Santa Clara Valley this year was Alan Wang. So it was, I mean, it helps to focus. It helps to do the right thing. But above all, I think it helps to have a coach. You know, if you're struggling, I'm not kidding you guys that Mark made such a big difference in my business. I know Kenny would not have been where he's at also without it. He's waving his hands and clapping at Mark as am I. Um, so, I mean, it's just you've got to be pulled in, put in, put in the hard work. You've got to do the things that they tell you to do. Get up in the morning and do your affirmations. It sounds so silly and so dumb stand in the mirror and going I am the best listing agent nobody else can beat me my clients love me I'm the best wife possible I mean I just you know do it it is great it'll make you feel great so let's go back to Kenny if you could um sorry Brian could you go to Yvette and then start from the beginning this right here is so Donna Tam is our is a licensed realtor who just came on with, with Santa Clara Valley, and she came on my team, and she's our director of operations. She's been a longstanding friend who's probably sent me about 10 referrals along the way. Amazing amount of business. And she's now on the team. I always knew she should be a realtor. She's just amazing. And she's got a natural... She's just a natural for this stuff. So she put these spreadsheets together because guess what? She came from the Apple world and ChargePoint as a program manager. So she just put all this stuff together for us. So if you take a look at the left, this is exactly what Keller Williams book tells us you to do. Track what's booked, what's executed. Um, seller's book, seller's executed. Buyer's book, buyer's executed. Listing agreement signed. Um, offers for sellers. We took that out. Contracts written. Um, contracts accepted, sellers, transaction units, and then trailers, sellers, dollars. So, um, Brian, this doesn't look like the right one.
Oh. Can you go back? To the... So this doesn't have the total for the transactions and it doesn't have the goals that, um, no, could you go back to that again and go all the way at that to it, column A and B? Well, maybe that was it, what you had before. So I don't see the one that says goals left over to meet. Okay, let me. So this is the wrong one. Different, one. different file, yeah. Okay, could you find that one, please? Yeah, I'll look. Let me look this for is it. not what we want. Um, so if you could find that, but the whole idea, guys, is you should be tracking. If you have to do twelve, if you have to do twelve transactions, twelve listings by the end of the year, how many do you have to do every month? One, right? So yes, if one. you said that you're going to do 12 and you're and you're now three months into the year and you're not there, then you have to take a look at your goals again or you have to speed up your activity, one or the other. You can't, there's no two ways around this, right? And there's nothing wrong with bringing your goals down if you need to and reassessing. I strongly advise, again, I'm going to say it, that you get a coach. I pay $1,295 per every transaction. Um, I, I know that Mark reevaluates his numbers every year, so I don't know what it's going to be by the Can't hear you back. Okay, can you hear me now? Awesome. Yes. So I know I like I said, I don't know what Mark's dollars or what's his amount's gonna be um as you go along every year, but I know that we have a group of us on there. So it's the best money I ever spent. I would I would pay Mark a good, I will pay him for 12 more transactions. Because you know who's keeping most of that money? I am. But Mark has to be paid because, of course, he brings value. What did we just talk about? Value proposition. Mark has a value proposition. He delivers on that value proposition with us. And we know it because all of our business has increased. And so do not look at it as, oh, the money that's going out. You pay that money once you get to a certain level. But let me tell you what, you've got to perform because you just can't be coaching you if you're not really doing the work in the background, right? So you just have to be willing to do the work in the background. So here you have it. I said I was going to do $7.2 million and I did not. I did 5.8. I don't know if you could circle that, um, Brian. I did 5,854. And so I had, an, I, came, I had a shortfall of 1,346,000. But if you look at my buyers, I said I was going to do 8.6 million. I did 10.375 million. So I had an overage. So I came out a little bit ahead. But like I said to you, Mark said, as a rainmaker, you can't be doing this. He's going to say that to all of us because he actually has everybody in our team chasing listings. Everyone. And I'm just curious. Somebody, maybe Nick, why, why is it that Mark has us chasing listings right now? Because it's a seller's market and it's a guaranteed uh, paycheck. Excellent. Love you, Nick. <laughs> Just remember that what he said is so right on. It's a seller's market. Focus on what you know is going to close. Or get really good about speaking firmly to your clients and showing them analysis. And this is what we we're speaking about. I'll give them analysis that shows them they bet if they do not, this is what I say to my buyers. If you keep um, coming in below what I, I am telling you to come in at to win this, you are going to be paying more next month for the same house. Because, Mark, why is that? Why are they paying more the next month for their house? Mark, first team. Why are people paying more for their house next month? Because the prices are going up. About so how, how much do you are get the next up? wave of sellers to sell? You show them how much the one just sold for and say you can do better. There's 5,000. 
thousand agents or ten thousand agents, sorry, doing that every day. So the new people that are coming to market are definitely going to have oh well those sold for one two we're going to be listing at one three. So th that's just the way it is. And the other thing that Mark has taught me to say too is that you know I say to my buyers okay, you were one of thirty people to put in the offer you didn't get it you are now one of twenty nine people looking for the next house in this neighborhood. There are only two houses coming on. So you are now going to be the next person. The prices are going up and now you're still in the competition. So how about we get this done next month for you so that you're not competing against those 29 people? I got my client to come up from $2.1 million to $2.3 million. And now he says he's willing to come $2.5 million. And it's because I showed my engineer stats. It's as simple as that. It's simple, but it's not easy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's it. I think I've gone over my time. I, I wanted to give you some practical side of it as well. Um, and I hope that's helpful. Just one more question. If anybody has a question, one more, we'll take it. No? Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I hope it was helpful. And I look forward to seeing you guys out there. Thank you. This was very helpful. Oh, good. I'm glad that you found it helpful. Thank you. And um, everybody, if you don't know it, um, you can, again, hold on, let me see here. You can contact me um, at, you can write this down. My email is the best way to do it first, please. And then I can reach out to you after that. I'm a little bit busy the next 48 hours. But my email address is Yvette, Y-V-E-T-T-E, -E, and you see my the name, Peterson Realty Team, it's all E's. And um, you can reach out to me that way if you have any questions. I look forward to the time when we can all get back into an office together and share information in person. Thank you for your time, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And sign Thank up. you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks, Bye. Bob. Thanks, Rob. Sorry. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Yvette. That was great.